my brand to be a tool for me to help other women and empower them. It wasn't the right time for me to have a purpose. That kind of brings us to what fast fashion. It's good because I didn't force it. I kind of just like let it happen. I want a business. Hey, and welcome to Start Somewhere, your motivational place to help you fight fear, cultivate confidence, and feel your most empowered self. I'm your host, Isabel Prestia. And we chat all things motivation, mindset, and empowerment, all by starting somewhere. Welcome back to another episode of Start Somewhere, the podcast. I am so excited, as always, to share another episode with you. However, this is especially exciting because today I am sharing my very first interview of the podcast. I have a whole heap of amazing guests planned, so I'm so excited to share a whole bunch of interviews with you. However, today I am starting off my interviews with the lovely Ina. Ina is the creator of Ina The Label, which is a sustainable swimwear brand providing bikinis and one pieces made from recycled ocean waste. Now, my main reason for interviewing Ina is because I really wanted to dive deep into how she started her brand, more so how was her mindset and how she overcame any blockages that were limiting her. In this episode, we also learn more on sustainability and the effects of fast fashion. I found this super insightful and I'm so excited to share this interview with you. Let's do this. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like kind of nervous at the beginning, but once I'm talking, Hello guys and welcome back to Start Some With A Podcast. My name is Isabel and today is a very special episode because I'm with my very, very first guest of the show, the lovely Ina. And Ina owns an incredible swimwear brand, which is all based on sustainability. Ina is also a very close friend of mine. So I was very excited to have her on the show, especially when she agreed to come on. And today we're just going to chat all about her story, how she started her brand, and and in particular more so like her mindset and how she overcame any struggles that she may have had with starting her brand and just her whole entire journey so I'm going to pass the mic over to Ina and we're going to hear more on her label. Hello everyone thank you Isabel for having me I'm very excited and I'm like very honored to be able to be the one to be able to be um, sharing what sustainability is Um, I hope I can bring light and, um, yeah, just educate a bit more and, um, help you guys out on your little journey. I'm like I was saying to Ina just before we were recording, like, I don't know much about sustainability and also fast fashion is something we're really going to touch on. So I'm learning just as much as you guys are, if you're listening, if you may not know as much, but before we do dive into this episode, the way I'm going to be starting all of my special guest episodes is to chat all about what is their number one non-negotiable in their morning routine for success. If you listen to the show, I'm the biggest creature of habit, love success, sorry, love routines, love habits for success. So Ina, what is your one non-negotiable thing you do most mornings? So I guess mine will be a little bit different. Um, I'm not the type to wake up early in the morning and go to the gym. But one main thing I think is um, really just being thankful that I'm, I've woken up Gratitude. and just, yeah, just yeah. being grateful. Um, yeah. I live with Toby. So yeah, just being grateful that I'm alive. I have him. I have good people around yeah. me. So yeah, just Aww. having a grateful um, start to my day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And for those of you as well, like um, Ina's boyfriend, Toby is actually who I had another podcast with Mind Movement Matters. So I know there are some OG listeners out there. So that's, <laughs> that's our little connection there. Anyway, so I want to go straight into this. So sustainable swimwear. So I guess kind of like a brief, I don't know, education, like a brief kind of statement on what sustainable swimwear is. And then more so like, why was this so important for you to then implement in your brand when you thought, Hey, I want to create a swimwear brand. And then what was kind of the thing where you're like, I need to make it sustainable. Like what was kind of your mindset around everything there? Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, I guess firstly, I want to quickly talk about what sustainable sustainability actually is. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it's basically being able to still do or meet your own, um, 
uh, demands, what you need, yeah. um, and not affecting the planet or not affecting like future generations to come. Mm, yeah. So it's um, yeah, and just being able to do what we can normally do, like having a swimwear, but still not like um, hurting our planet. Yes, um, I've actually got an uh i've put down a little um fact sheet oh, about um oh, give us the why the ocean is important yeah. to us because i feel like not everyone um really is aware or like doesn't really know why the ocean is there for its like bigger purpose That's such a good so point, yeah. yeah so um so the pr- the ocean produces over half the world's oxygen and it absorbs 50 times more carbon dioxide than our um atmosphere and the ocean also transports the heat from the equator to the poles, so it regulates our climate right. and um, weather patterns. So that's, I think, that's why we're experiencing climate change and stuff, because yeah. the ocean's um, getting really hurt, and, yeah. like, all the corals are dying, all the fish are, like, there's all this plastic. Yeah. And I guess that leads me to why I wanted a uh, sustainable swimmer brand, and that's, um, yeah, just protecting our ocean. So... My swimwear line, um, I'm sorry, the fabric is made from recycled ocean waste. So they collect yeah. all the plastic, the um, the nets that gets lost in the ocean. Yeah. So they collect that and then they make it into like these like beautiful soft um, fabric. And that's what the fabric's mm. made of. Uh, sorry, the bikini is yeah. made of. Yeah. So they're very good quality and they're made to last, which is also a big part of being a sustainable brand you don't want it to um keep buying more and more and more so it's more about the quality yeah quality over quantity basically yeah Yeah. so it's um guess that touch uh that kind of brings us to what fast fashion is so fast fashion is i guess like h&m like target like all those clothes yeah so basically um yeah just they just keep putting out all these like um clothes and materials and all that just just cause for cheaper price yeah, so that money. people keep buying and buying and buying basically yeah. yeah so they're not really for the planet I should say very very interesting stuff and so I guess moving more so to your brand in particular so I have actually started to see a lot more I guess sustainable swimwear brands and just like sustainable clothing in general I feel like it's becoming a real big movement which is yeah. amazing so how does like your brand differ from other brands? Now, I, I have like a marketing background, so I love to like talk about this type of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, what like what makes your brand so distinct and so different to other swimwear brands who are also like sustainable? Well, I guess um, for my brand, it's very it's very personal to me. Like it's yeah. like um, it's a very it's got very small inventory, so it's okay. very. Um, yeah, so it's very, got like, exclusive. Yeah, very say. exclusive. Yeah. And like with my brand, I really want it to um like really involve like women of all shapes and sizes. Yeah, like like yeah, yeah, so it's um Body inclusive. Yeah. 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 I really want my brand to be a tool for me to help other women mm-hmm. and empower them and yeah. just be comfortable with who they are as well. Yeah. And um with my brand as well, like all the packaging is compostable and mm-hmm. there's no plastic with it yeah. like so you can basically when you get when you get the uh, the sorry the bikini from shipping yeah. you can open it up get the bikini out and then basically put everything in the compost bin That's so good. Like yeah from start to finish it's just a full sustainable yeah process. yeah exactly yeah okay awesome i love that i love that um okay so now so seeing as my podcast is called start somewhere i know a lot of my listeners do struggle with starting somewhere with whatever it is that's going on. So, and I I myself, like I love to learn people's like mindsets and just how they, how they started certain things. And especially with your brand, I find it, I love like hearing people of our age, like younger starting their own brands and labels. I just, I'm obsessed with it. So I just kind of want to know how exactly you started it, but more so more so like your mindset towards starting. So not necessarily like the processes, but more so the mindset and how you overcame any like challenges or any limiting beliefs that you had, like what was your real kind of motivational driving force basically with starting? Awesome. Um, (laughs) So with my mindset, I guess uh, I grew up with a lot of uh, 
So my family or like my friends, I guess, were always into business and all this. And I always thought like, I really want my own business. Like yeah. that lifestyle kind of like attracted me, like yeah. being your own boss, like doing all these decisions and all that. that. Yeah. So yeah. I really wanted one. But then I guess it didn't, it wasn't the right time for me because yeah. I didn't really know. I just, in my head, I was like, I want a business. But Based like, what yeah, business. like yeah. what product, that like nothing. And then so I guess, yeah it's good because I didn't force it. I kind of just like let it happen. I want a business. And then um, I guess I got into a more sustainable lifestyle. So I got into like uh, the reusable straws and then single use plastic. Like I kind of like stopped using. And um, as that kind of progressed, like I I researched more into sustainability and then I lived more sustainability, sustainably, (laughs) sorry. I know. Um, So I lived more sustainably and then... um, I kind of just, yeah, I kind of just, like, thought, hmm, like, why, yeah, like, why don't I have, uh, start a business that actually helps, and, yeah, like, just brings more awareness to sustainability, and actually do something good for the environment, and for people, instead of just having a business, and selling, and, like, fast fashion, like, just having a business, just cause, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. So I wanted to have a purpose. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, I feel like it's kind of like a passion and a purpose in the same way, which actually yeah. that was my last episode. Like I find if you are struggling to find like your purpose mm-hmm. – Say, for instance, you want to start a, start a brand like yeah. yourself and you're like, what should I do? You look at your passions yeah. and it's like you were living more sustainable. And then, yeah, yeah I love that. Yeah, That's really cool. Live it and you just exactly. Kind of what you're doing already. Yeah. yeah. And then just like flows like naturally and it just yeah. happens really organically. Yeah. That's really cool. I like that. Um, so just another side note. So how do you actually source your materials? So your sustainable um, yeah, materials when you're making your bathers. So how do you how do you make sure that actually are like ethical and sustainable because do they do lots of manufacturers lie like is it is it a thing like that or how did you find your manufacturer and then like trust them and that kind of stuff yeah so um that is a good question because there are some um that I I wouldn't say lie Just but like it's called yeah like I, I'm pretty sure the term's called greenwashing so oh, there's okay. some particular Sorry. terms yeah there's some particular words that you look for and things like that so I really did research like That's- Um, yeah, and you look into the company, like the manufacturer. So what I did was I researched all different kinds. I didn't just go to one manufacturer and I was like, oh, I already picked that one. I don't want to do all the work and all that. So I researched leading up to it. It wasn't just like a one day, this is it. Yeah, You know, like I researched and then I looked into their, um, ethical, uh, methods, their working environment, um, the fabric that they use and then also reviews, like a lot of reviews. Um, you email them, you talk to them. Um, and then I kind of just, yeah, resonated with this one, uh, manufacturer that I had and like, they just helped me out so much. And I, in the process as well, I learned Mm -hmm. with it. And then I was just like, I knew that it was the right decision because as I was learning about more about them, yeah. like I was, I wasn't regretting it. I was just like, yeah, like I was getting more That's excited. Getting yeah. Excited. So yeah. yeah, I guess you just research and yeah, research. Yeah. yeah I like that. I, like, I think it's yeah, so important with starting anything, just not going for the first thing, yeah. but doing, <laughs> doing, honestly doing your homework. Yeah, Cause it's for the long run. Exactly. Yeah. You want to be sustainable. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so what was like the biggest challenge you faced when starting your brand I know like a lot of people struggle with maybe like Mm self-doubt I know that's a big thing as well maybe like confidence so what was kind of your struggle and then how did you overcome it like what were your like coping mechanisms to Mm -hmm. overcome that struggle okay I think I can think of one uh, in particular so um, as a small business especially here in Adelaide um, I don't have a marketing background so I'm still learning in that area so I'm, I was kind of struggling. I was like, oh, nothing's happening. Like I was doing so well with all the hype and then it yeah. just kind of went down. And I was like, oh, like it's really stressing me out, especially yeah. the money. I was putting more money in, mm-hmm. um, like investing yeah, in it and all that. And then I was like, oh, like if it's stressing me out, like should I stop like doing all that stuff? Like, so should I stop the business? Should I sell uh, it and all yeah, that? Yeah. But then I was like, you know what, I'm not going to like be stubborn. I'm going to get a job. Like, so I actually got like a job, um, near, near the house. Um, and then, so all the money that I'm earning there, I'm going to invest back into the business just 
so I'm not stressing out about money. So I guess just not being stubborn and just like, um, yeah, not giving up and just keep pursuing whatever you've started. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I love that. It's like commitment and consistency, which is yeah. like a big message I have as well. And yeah, I find, yeah, if you're not seeing success, like keep going yeah. basically. Do something about it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. No, <laughs> <just> that's, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Create your own momentum yeah. if you're not seeing anything. Yeah. That's awesome. Good on you for getting a job. And lastly, so what is your daily flow for running your business? So I know you've just said you now have a part-time job on the side. So how many hours do you dedicate like is your business more of like a full-time role or yeah just what does kind of your daily routine look like for running your label um my routine at the moment is uh, I wouldn't say full-time but I definitely work my way around my job now so my main focus at the moment is uh, marketing so Instagram um like emailing like photographers and getting more content mm, for my yeah. um, business. So that's mainly my um, my goal at the moment is just having content. And I'm not really spending a lot of hours. Like I try to be more efficient with my time. So when I'm on my computer, like I no- already know what I'm doing. So yeah, yeah so I'm, yeah, I have a plan. So I, I if I don't like if I email someone and I don't get a reply, like I won't be like on my phone, like waiting oh, for something. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll wait for something to happen. Like yeah. I'm not going to force something. So I kind of just like go with the flow with my yeah, business. Yeah, I'm that. not, I'm not really, cause I get, str- I would get stressed out yeah. if I'm just on the phone, like waiting for something to happen, like Constantly being all like impatient. Working. Yeah. So I try to be patient. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, just maybe like after work I do a little bit yeah. like of Instagram yeah. like you Facebook yeah and then I do my like packaging like during like beginning of the week so then hopefully the people would get their products by the end of the week yeah. and then I kind of already have that system mm-hmm. so yeah just really really simple stuff I, like I guess it, I, like it. I feel like simple is the way to go yeah. it sounds like your business is very much based of like it's free flowy yeah. just what feels good what yeah. feels right you're not forcing anything yeah. I think that's like such a good takeaway as well like for people listening if they are struggling to start something like you don't have to go you don't have to have all these systems and processes in yeah. place like take one step at a time and see where it goes yeah, from there do what works for you because I guess that's why you started your business yeah. like that's why you have your own business because you're your own boss. Like you do what's good for you, for your mental health, yeah, especially. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, do what's best for you and your lifestyle. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I love that. That's awesome advice. And lastly, so for everyone listening, so where can they find your amazing brand? What is your Instagram page? So everyone can follow you. All right. So the um, Instagram page is Ina. So that's I N A dot the label. Um, and on Facebook, it's just Ina the Label. And I've got a website as well. It's inothelabel.com. Amazing. Nice and simple. I love it. <laughs> and lastly, we are going to wrap up every episode with something a little bit different from the interview. But Ina, what is something you have started recently in your life? And it can be absolutely anything. Something recently that you've started. Huh. Well, um, maybe a fun fact I have started jujitsu oh, <laughs> so yeah so um it's more of just uh, I guess my physical health yeah. because I'm always sitting down yeah, like and at the bakery nice. I'm like just like there's a routine like you just do things without even thinking about anymore yeah. so then like yeah. the jujitsu is a good like just break from yeah, it all yeah. <laughs> amazing well thank you so so much for coming on the show Ina it's been an absolute pleasure learning more about your brand and I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will chat to you next episode. How do you think that went? Yeah, good. I was getting a bit hot towards the end. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in to Start Somewhere. Share this episode with somebody who's also looking to start somewhere. And follow our journey on startsomewhere.podcast on Instagram. My name is Isabel, and I'll chat with you next time. I'm not gonna